Elvis and Priscilla Presley, young and beautiful. Welcome to Elvis and Priscilla Presley, young and beautiful, where we peel back the curtain on one of music's most mesmerizing, yet mystifying love stories. Imagine the king of rock and roll at the pinnacle of fame marries the breathtaking Priscilla, only to face a whirlwind divorce that shocked the world. Rumors flew wild, leaving everyone guessing what tore apart this picture-perfect pair. Today, we uncover it all from Elvis himself in a rare confession that will leave you speechless. Buckle up, this revelation is not for the faint of heart. The love story that unfolded between Elvis and Priscilla Presley began like something out of a fairy tale, yet it was steeped in the complexities of real life. When 14-year-old Priscilla Beaulieu first met the 24-year-old Elvis Presley in 1959, it marked the beginning of a romance that would captivate the world. At this time, Elvis was serving in the military overseas in Germany, far from the American spotlight, but not from its echoes of fame. Reflecting on her relationship with Elvis, Priscilla shared her enduring fondness for their shared history, telling people in 2021, I truly cherish the great times. As you grow up, there are always fears and insecurities, but as you get older, you understand it all. This sentiment underscores the profound connection and deep understanding that Priscilla felt for Elvis, despite the initial innocence of their young love. Priscilla's attraction to Elvis was undeniable, drawn in by his dynamic presence and good looks. As she recounted to Good Morning America in June 2022, he was fun to be with. We had fun everywhere we went. Coupled with his appealing boyish appearance, Elvis had all the qualities to captivate a young Priscilla's heart. She humorously noted in a 2017 Today Show appearance, everyone had a crush on him. Yet it was clear from the start that Priscilla was the one who truly captured Elvis's attention. Despite the concerns of Priscilla's parents, the couple managed to spend more and more time together. During these formative moments, Elvis opened up to Priscilla, sharing his innermost thoughts and aspirations. In a revealing 1985 interview with People, Priscilla disclosed, each night that I was with him, he entrusted a little more of himself, his doubts, his secrets, and his frustrations. It was a lot to expect someone my age to understand, but I tried. Through her words, we grasped the depth of their connection, forged not just in shared moments, but in the trust and vulnerabilities laid bare. With time, Priscilla went from being a young girl mesmerized by an iconic figure to a devoted partner, ready to stand by Elvis's side. Her dedication extended to all facets of her life with Elvis, from the welcome she prepared for him at home to the personal moments they shared in seclusion from the outside world. I was always ready to greet him at the door and pamper him, Priscilla explained to People in 2021, adding, I loved taking care of Elvis very much. I loved tending to him. I loved feeding him. This nurturing aspect of their relationship was accompanied by their unique form of intimate communication, as Priscilla revealed, we would baby talk because you have to have your own language when you have that many people around. This remarkable beginning, steeped in youthful innocence, tender care and genuine affection, set the stage for Elvis and Priscilla Presley's complex yet unforgettable love story. The marriage of Elvis and Priscilla Presley, once steeped in the innocence of young love, soon encountered the formidable challenges brought by Elvis's meteoric fame. As his career escalated, so too did the pressures and expectations placed upon their relationship, showcasing the heavy toll that stardom can exert on personal lives. Elvis's career was nothing short of demanding. His touring schedule was grueling, with performances and engagements that kept him away from home for extended periods. This constant move and the accompanying media attention not only strained their relationship, but also robbed them of normalcy. Priscilla, for her part, adapted to her role as Elvis's wife with both grace and resilience. Her life revolved around making their home a refuge for Elvis, away from the demands of his career. She was always ready to cater to his needs, managing the household and presenting a united front in public, despite the personal sacrifices this required. However, the issue of their age difference became a more pronounced challenge as time went on. When they first met, Priscilla was just a teenager, while Elvis was already in his mid-twenties. This gap meant that Priscilla 
in her formative years, was thrust into a world that demanded maturity beyond her years. It created a dynamic where Priscilla was constantly playing catch-up, trying to understand and cope with Elvis's complex world, filled with anxieties, expectations, and the dark allure of fame. Perhaps the most destructive element to their relationship was Elvis's burgeoning dependence on prescription drugs. This addiction intensified over the years, driven by a mix of the pressures of fame and his personal demons. Priscilla noted the alarming increase in Elvis's drug use, especially as his touring schedule became more demanding. This issue not only created a wedge between them, but also contributed to a host of other problems, affecting their communication, intimacy and shared experiences. The challenges of fame and marriage for Elvis and Priscilla were thus manifold, from dealing with the external pressures of Elvis's stardom to navigating their personal struggles within the confines of a public marriage. Their story reveals the complex interplay between love and fame, showcasing the sacrifices and adjustments required to sustain a relationship in the glaring spotlight of worldwide adulation. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment, OK, if you find this video interesting. Thank you. The marriage of Elvis and Priscilla Presley, though founded on mutual affection and understanding, began to unravel as they faced several internal and external pressures. The constant limelight, combined with Elvis's personal challenges, began to sow seeds of discord in their relationship. Central to their troubles was Elvis's infidelity. The nature of his career, filled with temptations and opportunities, led to situations that strained their bond. Priscilla herself spoke on this issue, stating to Sunday News in 2018, he wasn't faithful, not that he had someone special, but when you're in the entertainment business, there is always that. And I tried to turn my back on that, but I just didn't want to share him. This candid admission reveals the emotional turmoil Priscilla endured, highlighting the complexities of maintaining a relationship under the public eye. Priscilla also began to crave personal growth and independence. Her journey is quintessential of the search for self-identity beyond the shadow of her partner. Engaging further with aspects of her life that were independent of Elvis, such as delving into her interests and fostering her sense of self-worth, Priscilla found herself at a crossroads between her desires and the expectations of her marriage. The birth of their daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, introduced a joyous element into their lives, but also brought to light the stark realities of their strained marriage. Parenthood added a new layer of responsibility and highlighted the existing challenges in their relationship, further complicating the dynamics between Elvis and Priscilla. Adding to their marital woes, Priscilla's relationship with her karate instructor Mike Stone signified a turning point. This connection, which began as an exploration of Priscilla's interests outside her marriage, evolved into something more significant. It was a reflection of her growing need for independence and perhaps a subconscious stepping stone towards asserting her identity apart from Elvis. The culmination of these issues, ranging from Elvis's infidelity to Priscilla's pursuit of personal growth, set the stage for their eventual separation. This period of their lives underscored the inherent challenges of maintaining a marriage amidst fame, diverging personal paths, and the quest for autonomy. In navigating these turbulent waters, Elvis and Priscilla's relationship reflected a broader narrative of love, loss, and the painstaking quest for personal identity amidst the trappings of fame. In the midst of the Presley's tumultuous marriage, a defining moment arrived in mid-1972. Priscilla herself, seeking clarity and fulfillment beyond the confines of their relationship, recognized a stark reality. Speaking retrospectively to Ladies Home Journal, she revealed a poignant truth. In mid-1972, I finally realized that things were not going to change and that we had separate lives completely. This heavy-hearted acknowledgement signaled the beginning of the end for the couple's marriage. The news of potential separation was not taken lightly by Elvis, who was deeply affected by the notion of parting ways with Priscilla. According to his friend May Boren Axton, as quoted in People, the impact was substantial. It killed him. It hurt his ego, and it hurt his heart. Initially, Elvis could only bring himself to ask for a trial separation, hoping perhaps for reconciliation. Notably, this request came at a vulnerable time, 
when Priscilla was seven months pregnant with their daughter, Lisa Marie. Before their child's birth, the couple had only experienced brief periods apart, underscoring the gravity of their situation. The intimacy issues between Elvis and Priscilla also played a critical role in their disbandment. Priscilla charged that Elvis refused to be intimate with her following the birth of their daughter. In her candid 1986 autobiography, Elvis and Me, Priscilla shared a personal account that shed light on Elvis's psyche. He had mentioned before we were married that he had never been able to make love to a woman who'd had a child. These words reveal the deeply ingrained complexities Elvis faced with intimacy and fatherhood, which further isolated Priscilla. Throughout their marriage, Elvis's infidelity was also a recurring issue, with numerous instances of him seeing other women, severely damaging the trust within their union. For Priscilla, personal growth led her to seek companionship elsewhere, notably with her karate instructor, Mike Stone. The relationship signified not only a bond outside of her marriage, but also a step towards asserting her independence. Despite a vow renewal in Hawaii, the deep wounds of their marriage remained unhealed. By 1972, as Priscilla conveyed to Elvis her decision to divorce, it was apparent that their paths had irrevocably diverged. The divorce was finalized on October 9, 1973, but not without moments of tender nostalgia. Speaking about the day they formalized their separation, Priscilla expressed to People magazine in 1978, my life was his life, my problems were secondary. And later reflecting on the divorce, she stated in 2016, I did not divorce him because I didn't love him. He was the love of my life, but I had to find out about the world. Their enduring affection was evident as they secured shared custody of Lisa Marie and fostered a friendly co-parenting relationship. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. In the documentary Elvis by the Presleys, Priscilla candidly discussed the difficulties surrounding their separation and divorce, particularly in relation to Elvis's increasing reliance on prescription medications. Elvis's long-standing battle with insomnia worsened, and as Priscilla recounted, his struggle to sleep, a lifelong dilemma, was gravely exacerbated. His dependence on pills to chase away his blues or just give him the energy to make it through the day became more extreme. This acknowledgement points to the significant health issues Elvis faced, which were further compounded by the stresses of their divorce. Often emotions and senses can provide an unspoken narrative, Priscilla shared a profound moment from their last day in court, illustrating the stark realization she had about Elvis's deteriorating condition. She described her alarm upon holding his hand. His hands, always smooth, were puffy, swollen. I knew something was different. Something was wrong. I could see it in his eyes. I could feel it in his hands. The divorce, while a symbol of their marital struggles, also was a demonstration of their deep-seated respect and care for one another. Priscilla described the moment as amazing, citing how they held hands in the judge's chambers. Such gestures painted a picture of mutual affection and the complexity of their relationship. It was as though we were an old married couple rather than about to be divorced adversaries. Even in their parting, there remained a profound connection, so much so that as they left the courtroom, Elvis tenderly sang Dolly Parton's I Will Always Love You to Priscilla an intimate farewell to a significant chapter of their lives. In an unusual audio clip, the celebrated artist pauses his Las Vegas show to share insights into his private life, while in the presence of his daughter Lisa Marie, his former spouse, and his current companion, Sheila Ryan. Elvis started off by acknowledging the common belief that the song You Gave Me a Mountain was his own creation and reflected his relationship with Priscilla. Addressing the audience, he highlighted Priscilla's attendance and requested her to rise. She's right here. Please stand up. Elvis invited Priscilla to stand, adding, Boy, she's a beautiful chick. I'll tell you for sure, boy. I know it when I pick them. Applause and whistles filled the room as he complimented his ex-wife. Following that, he introduced his young daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, who is six years old. She stood and greeted the audience, at which point Elvis gently chided her to keep her dress down amidst her energetic movements. And then at the same table is my girlfriend, Sheila. Stand up, Sheila, he directed through the microphone. Turn around, all the way around. Sheila, 
show off that ring. His girlfriend complied, revealing the sizable ring that Elvis had given her as per his instruction. Elvis began to clarify the situation, addressing the reason his former spouse, child and current partner were all sharing the same space. He explained, The thing I'm trying to get across, we're the very best of friends and we always have been. Our divorce came about not because of another man or another woman, but because of the circumstances involving my career. He continued, detailing, I was traveling too much, I was gone too much, and it was just an agreement. I didn't think it was fair to her that I was gone too much. We just made an agreement to always be friends and be close and care because we have a daughter to raise. Elvis then moved on to share details about his divorce, the process and how it unfolded, emphasizing how their amicable relationship meant they still exchanged gifts. Wrapping up his speech, he informed the audience that she had recently gifted him a $42,000 white Rolls Royce, expressing it as an act out of the kindness of her heart and signifying their warm relations. The complete audio is quite revealing and underscores the importance of Priscilla and Lisa Marie in his life. Elvis departed this life four years subsequent to his divorce from Priscilla in 1977. Elvis's candid speech stirs curiosity around the true catalyst behind his and Priscilla's parting. Was it purely career stress or something deeper? Share your perspective below. Enjoyed diving into Elvis's personal revelations? Hit like and punch in a comment 9 if this video struck a chord with you. Remember to amp up your iconic inside experience by subscribing and ringing that bell for a front row seat to more intriguing content. Keep the conversation alive and we'll catch you on the flip side. Love Compass navigating Brook Shields' journey through the heart. Welcome to Love Compass navigating Brook Shields' journey through the heart. Prepare to be captivated as we delve deep into the riveting and complex love life of a Hollywood icon. From the glittering heights of fame to the shadows of private struggles, Brooke Shields' story is more shocking and profound than the roles she's portrayed on screen. Love, heartbreak and resilience. Shields' romantic history is a testament to her unwavering spirit. Join us as we reveal the raw, untold stories that shaped her, turning every stone of her sensational and tumultuous love life. This is Brooke Shields as you've never seen her before. The life of Brooke Shields encompasses more than just a familiar face seen on screens and magazine covers. It's a story of resilience, navigating the complexities of fame from a tender age and evolving amid both personal and public challenges. Born into the world of show business, her journey from a child model to an acclaimed actress and advocate is woven with both luminous highs and unequivocal lows. As we delve into the early life and career beginnings of Brooke Shields, we uncover the foundations that shaped her into the icon she is today. Brooke Shields was born on May 31, 1965, in New York City, into a family already acquainted with the media spotlight. Her mother, Terry Shields, was an actress, while her father, Francis Alexander Shields, was a businessman from a well-known noble family. Despite the affluent lineage and connections to the glamour world, Brooke's early life was not devoid of challenges. The divorce of her parents when she was just five months old marked the beginning of a series of upheavals in her young life. Brooke's upbringing, primarily under the guidance of her mother, was a mix of grooming for stardom and navigating the complexities of a parent leaning heavily on her child's success in the limelight. Brooke Shields' entry into show business was almost predestined with her mother Terry, steering her career from a very young age. At just 11 months, Brooke was introduced to the world of modeling, securing her first job for ivory soap. This early brush with fame was soon followed by a steady stream of modeling assignments, making her a recognizable face in advertisements and magazines. Shields' transition from modeling to acting was seamless, yet impactful. At the tender age of 12, she starred in Pretty Baby, a controversial film that thrust her into the heart of media scrutiny due to its provocative content. The early fame brought Brooke Shields unprecedented attention, not all of which was welcome. The young star found herself under the microscope of public and media scrutiny, a situation complicated by her mother's ambitious management style. Shields' roles in movies like Pretty Baby and later The Blue Lagoon and Endless Love were controversial. 
sparking debates around the sexualization and exploitation of child actors. Despite these challenges, Shields navigated her early career with a level of grace and professionalism remarkable for her age, laying the groundwork for her rise to prominence as a cultural icon of the 1980s. The journey from a child model to a Hollywood sensation, Brooke Shields' ascent to fame is a narrative of bold roles and influential rye, marks of a career that shaped an era. In 1980, Brooke Shields was cast in The Blue Lagoon, a film that remains one of her most recognized roles, playing the role of Emmeline, a young girl shipwrecked on a deserted island. Shields captured the audience's imagination with her beauty and poise. Her performance turned heads and won hearts, firmly securing her position in Hollywood. A couple of years earlier, Pretty Baby, set in the early 1900s in a brothel, saw Shields portray a child growing up in the most adult of worlds. The challenging role drew critical acclaim and public attention, pushing Shields into the limelight and sparking discussions on the appropriateness of child actors in mature roles. Nothing comes between me and my Calvins, declared Brooke Shields in a now infamous 1980 Calvin Klein jeans commercial. At just 15, Shields became an overnight fashion icon. The bold advertisement coupled with her burgeoning film career elevated her to the status of a cultural symbol of the era. Her name became synonymous with a new, modern femininity that was both alluring and controversial. Her modeling career flourished, leading to endorsements, magazine covers, and becoming the youngest model ever to grace the cover of Vogue. While Brooke Shields' public persona was marked by her stunning looks and professional successes, the personal cost was significant. The pressures of fame weighed heavily on her young shoulders, scrutinized by the public, her mother's expectations, and the demands of an industry notorious for its relentless pace and often unforgiving nature. Amid the whirlwind of celebrity, she sought to carve out a semblance of normalcy, attending Princeton University and graduating with a degree in French literature, a testament to her desire for a world beyond the sparkle of Hollywood and a life grounded in education and personal growth. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment OK if you find this video interesting, thank you. 3. Relationships and Personal Life Brooke Shields' journey through personal relationships reflects a narrative filled with public curiosity and intense scrutiny. Her romantic past is a mosaic of high-profile names and poignant experiences. In her youth during the bustling 1970s, Scott Bio emerged as Shields' first public relationship. Contrary to the picture-perfect S presented to the public, it was later disclosed that their outing served a promotional purpose rather than stemming from genuine affection. A year later, in 1981, she formed a platonic connection with John Travolta. Travolta held Shields in the highest esteem, famously admiring her goodness and untainted nature. Their relationship was emblematic of a young Shields navigating the world of celebrity without falling into its more sinister snares. During her time at Princeton University in the 1980s, Shields shared a significant chapter of her life with classmate Dean Kane. Marking a pivotal moment in her coming-of-age story, she confided, we loved each other, a sentiment grounded in a profound yet non-romantic love. The 80s and 90s saw Shields in the company of the King of Pop, Michael Jackson. Their companionship was unmistakable and often misunderstood by the public as romance. Despite rampant speculation, Shields clarified their relationship, stating, we just felt safe with each other. We watched movies and ate candy and laughed at the craziness around us. We loved each other, but it was not at all romantic. In the early 90s, Liam Neeson entered Shields' life, proposing swiftly yet informally. Despite their intense bond, the relationship eventually unraveled. Shields' union with tennis icon Andre Agassi personified a notable chapter in the landscape of celebrity marriages. They communicated long distance, bridging the gap through faxes and deep conversations. The marriage ceremony in 1997 captivated the public's attention, but fraught with challenges led to a dissolution after two years. In 2001, Shields embarked on a journey of lasting love with television writer Chris Henchy. Their marriage has withstood the test of time, showcasing a storybook romance steeped in reality. Shields effuses about her partner's role in supporting her through moments of self-doubt, sharing, if there's a moment when I'm starting to feel insecure, all he has to do is say, you know, you look beautiful. Their enduring connection is a testament to their shared resilience and love. 
an authentic bond unmarred by the ephemeral nature of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s previous liaisons. Together, they navigate the complexities of life in Hollywood, provide a stable environment for their children, and continue to write chapters in their enduring love story. The journey to motherhood for Brooke Shields was one fraught with emotional turbulence, marked by profound challenges, but also by immense joy and fulfillment. As she transitioned from the glare of Hollywood into the warmth of her family life, Shields encountered both heartache and happiness. Shields' path to becoming a mother was not straightforward. She faced several miscarriages, a heart-rending experience that tested her strength and resolve. Yet her desire to have children was undeterred, symbolizing a resilience that has defined much of her life. The emotional toll of these miscarriages was substantial, tearing at the fabric of her hopes, yet never dissuading her from her maternal aspirations. Eventually, Shield's dream of motherhood materialized with the birth of her daughters, Rowan and Greer. In motherhood, Shields found a new dimension to her identity, embracing the role with an abundance of love and a deep commitment to fostering a nurturing environment. Her parenting style is a reflection of her values. She strives to instill in her daughters the importance of kindness, resilience, and the courage to be their authentic selves. Shields emphasizes the significance of her daughters finding their own paths, liberated from the shadows of public expectations and familial legacies. Shields' experience with motherhood also brought her face to face with postpartum depression, a battle she fought publicly. Her candidness about this struggle shattered societal taboos and opened up a vital dialogue about maternal mental health. I was convinced that I was a terrible mother and that I was incapable of doing this job, Shields confessed, laying bare the depth of her despair. Yet in seeking help and speaking openly about her experience, Shields has become a beacon of hope for countless women facing similar struggles. Her advocacy in this area underscores the importance of seeking support, demonstrating that vulnerability and strength can coexist. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. V. Overcoming challenges and finding her voice. The life of Brooke Shields is one marked by resilience, introspection, and an enduring fight against the adversities thrown her way. Reflecting on her early life as an innocent star thrust into the limelight, Shields has not shied away from sharing her candid experiences. As a young actress in Hollywood, Shields confronted numerous challenges. The pressures of fame and the industry's often predatory nature left scars that took years to heal. It's taken me a long time to process it, she has admitted. It's a miracle that I survived. Her revelations paint a stark picture of the exploitation and objectification she faced in an industry that frequently saw women as commodities rather than individuals. In sharing her story, Shields aims to dismantle the misconceptions about women that prevailed in her earlier years. By discussing these difficulties, she hopes to shift societal attitudes and empower women to face their struggles head on. I'm so proud of looking at my body of work and saying, I accomplished that and I kept learning and I kept growing. I'm still here, she proudly asserts. Shields' openness has extended to her family, revealing truths that even her daughters were unaware of. I got in trouble with them because they were mad that I didn't inform them about everything, she confessed. This transparency is pivotal in her journey, bridging gaps in her family and fostering a deeper understanding and connection. Brooke Shields now uses her platform to advocate vigorously for women's rights, emphasizing the importance of speaking out against sexual harassment and abuse within the industry. Her story serves as a pillar of strength for many women seeking their own voices. Everybody processes their own trauma on a different timeline. I want to be an advocate for women to be able to speak their truth, she proclaimed. By addressing these issues openly, Shields creates a sense of camaraderie and support among women, reminding them that they are not alone in their battles. Her journey from innocence to empowerment serves as a beacon of hope and an inspiring testament of survival and strength. Through her advocacy, Shields affirms the notion that personal struggles can be transformed into broader societal change. Her life's narrative, one that includes facing and overcoming severe hardships, echoes loudly in her message. Resilience is not just personal, it is profoundly universal. Motherhood has undeniably transformed Brooke Shields. 
It has grounded her in a reality far removed from the veneers of Hollywood, bringing with it lessons of love, loss, and everything in between. Shield's narrative as a mother is one of triumphant resilience, a testament to her unyielding spirit and her capacity to nurture life in the face of adversity. Through her children, she has found a source of eternal joy and purpose, charting a course in life that is both deeply personal and universally inspiring. Brooke Shields, in navigating through the trials and triumphs of her life, has emerged not only as a cultural icon, but as a beacon of resilience and advocacy. Today, her legacy is enshrined not only in her cinematic and modeling achievements, but in her fearless voice and unwavering commitment to the causes she cherishes. Shields' perspective on aging and beauty transcends conventional standards. Her poise and confidence challenge societal norms, advocating for a more inclusive and compassionate view of aging. And finally, I asked myself, who will I be if I don't allow that anymore? This introspection marks a significant shift in her personal narrative, heralding a newfound acceptance and self-empowerment. Rather than yielding to the pressures and expectations imposed by the entertainment industry and society at large, Shields chooses to define her worth on her own terms. The challenges Brooke Shields faced in her journey to motherhood and her battle with postpartum depression reflect the stark realities many women encounter. Her candidness and advocacy in these areas create a roadmap for others navigating similar paths. I was about ready to call it quits and Chris said he wasn't sure he could handle seeing me rip off another oestrogen patch in frustration. This vulnerability and the resilience that followed underscore Shield's role as a mentor, guiding others through their moments of doubt and despair. Today, Brooke Shield stands testament to the power of resilience, authenticity and the courage to face one's demons. Her life's work extends beyond the screen and photo shoots, embodying a journey of personal growth, advocacy and the relentless pursuit of self-discovery. She has morphed from a child star scrutinized under the harsh lights of fame into a woman who commands her narrative, using her experiences to advocate for women's rights, mental health and the empowerment of the next generation. In conclusion, Brooke Shields' life story is one of beauty, resilience and transformation. From her early days as a child star to becoming a celebrated actress and model, Shields has navigated the pressures of fame with grace and determination. Behind her mesmerizing presence on screen and in print, she faced challenges that tested her strength and shaped her into the advocate and icon she is today. Brooke's journey reminds us of the importance of authenticity and the power of speaking one's truth. As we reflect on her candid revelations and the obstacles she overcame, let's open the floor for discussion. If you're a fan of Brooke Shields and admire her resilience and advocacy, please comment S to show your support. Let's celebrate her legacy together. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Iconic Inside for more insightful content about the legendary figures who have made a significant impact in the world of entertainment and beyond. Bring stories from Hollywood's mesmerizing vortex.